Uh, Kate and Phil. It's Katie, goddammit. Katie and Phil, sorry. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> just wanted to be that guy, I didn't mean it. I'm Philip Howborn, and uh, this is my cabin, the Eagle's Nest. Uh, we are up in Timis Casing, uh, Ontario. We're very alone here. Uh, I had exposure to the North when I was young, and I love the North, and it, it calls me, and I get here as often as I can. The group of people that, uh, that you can bring up, that I bring up here, is, is small. Um, it's, not every, it's not for everybody, right? Uh, the people I come up here with are, are handy, independent, they can do things on their own. My name is Katie Matthew. I farm in the city and then I've been cooking for 20 years and I'm here this weekend because I met Philip in the Arctic and I don't know anything about hunting and so I wanted to come out and do some hunting. Uh, most of the wild plants I know are from the city so it's been really good to be out here with the Peterson Field Guide too. Uh, we met each other probably about a week and a half before we decided we were going to spend seven weeks together with no internet or telephones. In a remote camp. In a remote location. I didn't like you at first. Uh, no, I didn't like you either. Yeah, it's okay. Weird. Yeah. Well, on the plane ride up to the Arctic, you actually <laughs> said, I'm going to sit over here because I'm going to have to spend the rest of the seven weeks with you. Yeah. So, um, I'm gonna, I want alone time right Hard now. Time. <laughs> Hey, I'm Joel, and uh, we're up here at Beauty Lake. I got into hunting many years ago, I was 13, when I got my license, and I uh, used to go up every fall on this particular weekend to Northern Ontario and go bird hunting with my dad. Uh, Joel and I met at Glen Burnie Lodge. Uh, I was working there at the time, and uh, we became very good friends. Every opportunity possible, I call up Joel, and we, we head north. He's very knowledgeable. Really enjoy getting out with people that are new to the sport and introducing them to it. and. You know, most times uh, people truly fall in love with it like I have over the years and uh, it's a great way to get out in the fall and really experience, uh, you know, backcountry Canada and see what's, see what's going on out in the bush. We came up here because, well, because you have a hunting cabin, but also because I don't know anything about hunting and I was really, really bummed about that. I feel like that's a missing link and these guys were perfect rednecks. So I figured it would be safe <laughs> and funny and there'd be a lot of really good snacks. Saw a lot of great hunting opportunities right off the get-go. There's a lot of old logging roads, uh, gravel-based, which is perfect for partridge. Basically, you walked out of the truck and, uh, I don't know, 15 yards down the trail and there's a partridge in the middle of the road. Come here. Good boy. Hey, come here. Weston. <laughs> Let him do his victory. <laughs> Just give him a minute. Let him get this out of the way. So this is Weston. This is my black lab. He's six. Um, He's got a natural ability to hunt. He's a retriever, and that's what they were bred to do. From the first time I brought him out, he successfully retrieved a duck for me, and uh, we've been on many hunting trips since. And uh, it's, uh, it's really cool to see uh, an animal working and doing what it was bred to do. Drop. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> okay, you gotta leave this one alone, pal. Having a dog is definitely an advantage. He would fetch the bird, not necessarily give it up right away, but at least he would have it in his mouth, and when he could find it. It's a good dog. A breast out of that. Yeah, nice little meal. Perfect. All right. This time of the year, we get to wear a lovely blaze orange vest. They make people visible for long, long distances. It's just common sense. I mean, you got to have your wits about you. If you're walking side by side, set safe directions. Uh, Philip and I yesterday on the trail, I mean, we made it quite clear. He could not cross more than 15 degrees to his 90, and I, I to his left-hand side, and I was always on his left and I would do the same, respect the same boundary to the right. Just more birds in here. Second one. Hunt him up. We engaged one partridge, it flew into a tree, and after Weston brought it back, we discovered that its guts were hanging out. So guys, this one's kind of messed up. I'm gonna clean it on the trail. Do you guys have a vacuum bag? We, we decided to do a little demonstration on how to clean a bird in the side of the trail, and uh, it typically works best when partridge are warm. Um, Cold-bodied birds, uh, after they've rested for four, five, six hours. It's, it's possible, but it's tougher to do. I like to clean them on the side of the trail. Uh, I carry Ziploc bags with me just to store right. them in and uh, throw them in the pack when you're done. That's a, it's a great way to, to cut down your workload for later on. So everything happened kind of all at once. Like yeah. while we were looking for birds, the, there were blueberries and mushrooms around. So you just, we carried bags and just picked things as we went. I always look for the fruit first. 
because it's a blueberry, nothing else really looks like a blueberry. And then you can go backwards and kind of identify the plant by its leaves, you know? It's got these little red leaves. You can see that they have points on them and they're pretty much like, they look, you know, kind of like the noun of leaf in the dictionary, only they turn red at this time of year. Early in the year, they would have been kind of like a warmer green, like this guy here. And that's kind of it. Lobster mushroom, very firm. This is a wonderful sample. It's very unique looking. There's not a lot of other mushrooms that look like that in the area. Well, there's none. It's red and it's chubby and it's trumpet shaped and it's low growing and you can see it from a long distance. It doesn't look like other mushrooms so you can be super confident eating it. Watch the survival show once where they used a, a bullet cartridge, the powder from it, they extracted the bullet, used the powder, and then put a spark to it, and that was an efficient way to light a fire. So I had uh, some 22 shells in my pocket, and I thought I'd pull them out and give that a go. Use my flint striker, and poof, it worked fantastic. And that's how you make fire. Here we have wild blueberries. Here we have a ruffed grouse breast and a spruce grouse breast. Notice this one is much darker, the spruce grouse. First, what we have to do though is clean the mushrooms. So I've grabbed a little bit of spruce there and I'm going to just clean. So the wild apples we found uh, on the way up, we were just uh, driving and I spotted a tree. Thank you. Beautiful cinnamon note came out of them. Oh, the uh, lobster mushrooms are bananas. That's incredible, yeah, yeah. 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 Put your face on the skillet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah! Oh. <laughs> it smells oh, so good, but it like hurts. <laughs> Put the grouse Preheated in. Preheated the pans. Yeah, yeah, they're yep. very nicely seasoned. Got into the hot pan, got some, a little bit of, little bit of color. Immediately cool it down with some cold blueberries. Another little knob of butter. Mm -hmm. Bring the whole thing together off the heat. We want the meat to be just Warm, barely coagulated. Well, the dish came together naturally. Mm -hmm. Like finding really unusual things to plate on and work with, not only are obscenely attractive just because they're part of nature and that's inevitable, but just kind of messing around with those things, I think it's just, I think it's a really wicked puzzle and then you get to eat stuff when you're done. <laughs> Joel really pulled together with the chopsticks. I was impressed. Yep. They were perfectly balanced. They were balanced. very attractive. I still have them. <laughs> Joel continues to pull out MacGyver tricks almost, you know, every five to 10 minutes where he's the guy that can, I don't make whatever you want. Yeah. He made, Joel made the cutting board. Uh, Joel made the muddler. The beauty, bur bourbon beauty? Bourbon beauty. The bourbon beauty. A combination of spruce, muddled spruce and bourbon and a bit of maple. Maple syrup. And water from Beauty Lake. Uh, yeah, we're millionaires. <laughs> oh, that's really good. <laughs> so good. Okay. Springfield oh, Lake. Oh, drinking that at start. Oh, oh that's really good. Wow. Cheers, guys. It's been yeah, a good day. Too. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, bon appétit. <laughs> oh, my God. So good. Those mushrooms oh, are awesome. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hunting is all about the walk, the companionship, for, I mean, for us, the food. Uh, and the hunt we take seriously, but uh, it is what it is. And just enjoy it and not get upset about it. You come up to spend time, and what happens in the time is unique every time. Okay, so what, we spent the whole day out in the woods cooking and foraging. I'm gonna get my hunting license. I'm really excited about it. <laughs> Don't tell my mom. <laughs> <laughs>